death of Tyree Nichols. What's your reaction to these very serious charges? Well, I expected serious charges. I really did. Actually, the charges that were placed, or at least the administrative charges, were probably the most severe that I've seen in my career. But they were absolutely appropriate. And I knew that the next step would be in the hands of the DA's office, so I, I'm not surprised. These were pretty um, extraordinary measures, I must say, in all the times that I've been covering these types of incidents, to fire the officers and to charge them so strictly. Is, does that speak to what we're going to see on that videotape when it is released after 7 p.m. Eastern? Uh, absolutely. I think that, you know, it also speaks to the fact that, you know, over the last several years, we have all talked about police legitimacy you know, and police reform. And I think it's really important that in instances like this, when they are serious, when, are, when they are, the, they do arise to that level where a person's constitutional rights have been violated, their civil rights have been violated, that we act and we act swiftly. When did you first learn about this incident, Chief? Um, it was probably about four o'clock in the morning that previous, the, the, the previous day, eight o'clock at night, nine o'clock, this incident occurred. About four o'clock in the morning, I learned of the incident, and uh, it was just a strange uh, summary of what occurred on a traffic stop. And uh, I decided to go in the office and meet with the individuals that had information that I could take a look at it, even though at that time, uh, Tyree was in the hospital. <coughs> Uh, but still, because he had injuries that that just I just didn't understand, it was incomprehensible to me. Um, we came in the office and uh, decided to take a look that Sunday morning, and it was alarming. That's when you Sunday morning is when you first saw the video. That's absolutely right. And then when you saw it, what was your reaction? Um, I was I was outraged. I was uh, it was incomprehensible to me. It was unconscionable, and um, I, I felt that I needed to do something and do something quickly. Uh, I don't think I've witnessed anything of that nature in my entire career. Really? Really. That bad? It was that bad. What are we going to see then? Um, you, you're going to see acts that defy humanity. You're going to see um, a disregard for life, um, duty of care um, that we're all sworn to, and um, a level of physical uh, interaction that is above and beyond what is required in law enforcement. And, um, and I'm sure that, you know, as I said before, that individuals watching will feel what the family felt. And if you don't, then you're not a human being. And we all are human beings. And um, I think there will be a measure of sadness as well. How long do these incidents go on? We heard from the district attorney yesterday and from the head of the TBI that there were two separate incidents, right? Yes. How long do they go on? And when, when what was the worst part of it because it, it has been said that the officers became charged yes during the second incident that they got more riled up well from the very beginning to me they were riled up you know uh, i don't think they were as amped up as they were on the second uh, at the second um scene but just the stop the nature of the stop um very aggressive loud you know um communication and it was, it just rose from there. It escalated from there. Um, Mr. Nichols was able to uh, get away from these officers and um, they found him again uh, at another location. And at that point, uh, there was, a, there was an, an amount of aggression that uh, is unexplainable. You know, in any instance uh, where, where you're apprehending someone, even in the worst situations where there is resistance, officers still have the responsibility to exercise care and regard for any individual that's in custody or they're attempting to apprehend. And they're trained to do that. And um, to de-escalate. And to de-escalate. And th that's a piece I think that is in question but I think the escalation was there from the officers 
before training even needed to come in as it relates to de-escalate. The escalation was already at a high level. So you're saying they did everything wrong? No, nothing that, you, you think this was outside of their training, everything? Oh, absolutely. So you mentioned, you said the nature of the stop. Yes. Can we talk about the nature of the stop? Yes. Why, why, what was the nature? Why was he stopped? Well, um, I'm going to be honest with you about the stop itself. Uh, what is what was said was that there was um, a witnessing of what was considered reckless driving. Um, we've looked at cameras, we've looked at body worn cameras, and even if something occurred prior to this stop, we've been unable to substantiate that at this time. Um, not, so you, you haven't been able to, to substantiate a reckless, the reckless, the driving. reckless driving at no, all? No, we have not been able to substantiate the reckless driving. And that was why he was supposedly stopped? Right? That was why he was supposedly stopped in the very beginning. And that was, the, that was a concern. So, uh, of course, in an investigation, we began to look at what was the probable cause for the stop? Where were the cameras? Was there um, some evidence uh, on the body camera, on other cameras along those thoroughfares? And we've taken a, a pretty uh, extensive look to determine, you know, what that probable cause was. And we have not been able to substantiate that. It doesn't mean that something something didn't happen, that but the there's cameras, no proof. There's no proof that the cameras didn't pick up. That the cameras didn't pick up. So before the incident, you're looking at other cameras, other surveillance right. cameras around the city? Around the city other thoroughfares, you know, even business cameras, any uh, video footage that we could potentially pick up to see what occurred prior to this stop. The information that we have right now, of, based on what we could observe, is the stop itself and the first officer exiting his vehicle, and you'll see that on the body worn camera. And at that time, the officers were already you know, aggressive and and, and, mm -hmm. and so you haven't found anything that to substantiate the probable cause for reckless driving. Not at this time. And this was just within a couple hundred feet of his home. That's right. Of his home. That's right. Few okay. blocks away. Okay. Um, the, 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 he was apprehended by uh, the Scorpion unit, which was launched under your leadership in 2021. Yes. yes. Um, were they part of a street crimes unit? There was no. Were they looking for some other crime other than? Reckless Absolutely. driving for, from Terry Nichols? Absolutely. Well, you know, the, the Scorpion Unit, the acronyms, Street Crimes Operations to Restore Peace mm -hmm. in Our Neighborhoods. The whole concept was based on the fact that we had an outcry because of three years of violence in the city. You know, um, numbers of violent crimes, robberies, homicides, aggravated assaults. And this is one of three teams whose uh, primary responsibility is to reduce gun violence, to um, be visible in communities, and, um, and to also impact the rise in the crime, basically out of, out, out of an outcry from the community. We had record numbers in 2021, 346 homicides. So this unit was put together and they had great success, believe it or not, um, last year uh, was the first year in a long time that we had reductions. So, but is this an indication of a failure in that unit? Uh, this is an indication that there is uh, a gap somewhere in that unit. My observation is that, you know, we have several contributing factors. Uh, we train and we retrain these officers, just like specialized units around the country. These officers, in working in specialized units, you always need to make sure that the supervision is there and present. Do you fear that they have done something like this in the past? Do you have any evidence of that? Well, we don't have evidence at this particular time and looking at their disciplinary packages. However, we're taking a deeper dive into um, previous arrests, previous video <laughs> camera footage. We also reached out to the ICP <coughs> who is, who is who will work with the Department of Justice. We've asked the IACP and the Department of Justice to come in and take a look at our specialized units. We don't want any gaps in any of our units. I've heard about from you from every single person that I've spoken to that said the buck stops with you. Yeah. Is, do, you, uh, do, you do you feel that you have any responsibility in this failure in this unit? Well, I can't remove myself from responsibility. And, and of course, we can't always be with our officers. 
but it's incumbent upon us to act and have checks and balances in place. But we have to rely on those individuals that are also in supervisory positions and commander's positions. But the accountability is throughout the police department, all the way up to the chief. Do, do you have any interaction with any of the people in the, in the shooting, any of the officers in the shooting? Uh, I've met them, you know, just, you know, one-on-one -on -one and had an opportunity to see them out, you know. Uh, some of them uh, in some of the other units have received recognitions and awards because of the reductions in crime. But this particular unit, uh, even though you meet the officers, you don't know them as personally. Your impressions uh, of them? Um, my impressions of them, you really, you they acted just like any other normal uh, officer, you know, respectful when they see you. But uh, what I saw in this video was more of a, a group think sort of mentality. Mm -hmm. You know, a group think, um, and, and no one took a step to intercept or, you know, intervene. And that's why the charges are as severe as they are. Does this speak to officer better training for the officers? Because you said it's a group think. Yeah. That means there's something with the training. There's something within the department or police departments where the group think can cause something like this to happen. And and they have good training in that regard. I think one of the gaps that you know I have observed since being here is that we need more supervisors in our police department. We have what we call a span of control, you know, issue. And as uh, we have eliminated a higher rank in the police department to create more supervisors. Let's talk about the video. Yes. Um, it has been said that it is reminiscent, perhaps worse than the Rodney King video. Is that your assessment? It's my assessment. Yeah. I, was, I was in law enforcement during the Rodney King um, uh, incident, and it's, it's, you know, very much aligned with that same type of behavior. It, and it's worse? Sort of group think. Um, I would I would say it's about the same, if not worse. If not worse. If not worse. So take us through the video tonight, um, when it is released. It has been said there's over an hour. There's um, the pole cam. They said the sky cam, and there's body worn camera video. So what are we going? And, and how is it going to be distributed? Are you going to put it on social media? Are you sending it to the media? How is this going to be distributed? Actually, we plan to uh, post it on a YouTube link so that it can be accessible to just about anybody who wants to access that video. Um, and we'll be pushing that out later on this evening. Um, the video is broken into four different sort of um, fragmented pieces, but they're all very relative to this, to this incident. The initial stop, the stop near um, uh, Tyree's home, and also body-worn camera of individuals that were at that scene. Is it, uh, was it released later on, on a Friday after 6.30 um, Central Time, 7 o'clock Eastern Time? Was that, we were, we were told, I don't know if this true, you can confirm it. Mm -hmm. It was so that the officers could leave the building safely no. in case there are protests, no? No, no, not at all. And why? Well, we, we think about the entire public, to tell you the truth. We thought about schools. We thought about uh, business, and we felt like uh, Friday afternoon, if there were individuals who decided they wanted to peacefully protest, at least other individuals would have, you know, gone home, schools would be out, and it wouldn't be as disruptive as it would have been if we released it on a, on a Wednesday afternoon. In this video, it is said that Tyree Nichols cries for his mom. Did you hear that? I did. I heard him call out for his mom. For his mom. I did. Yeah. That's why this incident, not just that, but just the, the disregard for, for uh, humanity, as, as I mentioned before, um, I think that's what really um, just pulls into our strengths and makes you wonder um, why was a sense of care and um, concern this individual just absent from this situation. Uh, all who uh, went to the scene. Speaking of the people who went to the scene, have you spoken? Did you speak to any of the officers after? I have not. You have not? I have not. You spoke to the family? I have. I have. Um, you know, they got, I was just as emotional as they were. Um, 
and you can't help but feel their pain. You can't help but even take ownership of what they are going through. And um, I've extended and availed myself to the family in the days to come, not just as, you know, a peace chief, but as a mother, as someone who felt the pain of uh, Ms. Wells and her loss. And the sense of responsibility to do whatever I could, especially in the first steps of, of justice, you know, to terminate these officers and, you know, and hopefully the rest of this process towards justice will be a swift. In just moments, I'm going to speak to her and the stepfather. What do you say to them? I continue to let them know that um, we pray for them and, uh, and that I, I am still available. I, I extend uh, heartfelt condolences and I think, I think they know that. And, um, you know, we're going to be with them you know, for the long haul. Why not speak to the officer? Right now? You know, um, there's there's not much you can say. There's not much you can say. The policy for the Memphis Police Department requires officers to intervene, stop excessive force, and report these incidents immediately. Did anyone on that video, will we see that? Did anyone do that, or will we see that on that video at all? You will not see that on that video. There are two members of the fire department who are involved. What do you know about them, and who are they? Um, I don't know them specifically. I know there are two officers or two firefighters that uh, were paramedics, and I believe that the fire chief quickly started an administrative investigation into their actions or inactions at that scene as well. What's their involvement? Did they fail to render proper care? Uh, based on the video, they failed to render proper care. They just based by. on my assessment. Did they, they just stood up. And didn't render care. They, they began to um, render care and concern, but it was long after several minutes, and uh, which was, you know, concerning for all of us that uh, we, we see a number of failures where individuals did not exercise the amount of care that we are responsible for. You know, no matter what, 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 no matter what the cause is, you're responsible for exercising care. I want to go back just for a quick and ask you. So, do we know what sparked the confrontation at the, at the initial stop? I, I think that's that's the piece that is just unknown. No one knows. No one knows, and it's obvious when you see this video that it begins at a high level. Typically, when we have traffic stops, something sparks or at least you're able to see what sparks this amount of aggression and physical, you know, activity with the driver. We, we cannot tell based on video what that was about. Well, when did the beating start? Was it initially or was, was it when he tried to run away? There is, there is physical interaction between Mr. Nichols and the driver at the very beginning as the officers are trying to get him out of the car, but it's still unknown what the original reason was for the stop in the first place. I have to ask you, it's five black officers, the black police chief, the black community. What do you make of the race of the officers and what that says to the community and to the country about the police and the care? Well, I think it does, it takes off the table that issues and problems in law enforcement is about race, and it is not. It's about human dignity, integrity, accountability, and the duty to protect our community. And as, as this video will show you, it doesn't matter who's wearing the uniform, that we all have that same responsibility. So it takes race off the table, but it does indicate to me that bias might be a factor also in, you know, in the manner in which we, we engage the community. You've given, I'm so happy, uh, I am, I appreciate, I shouldn't say happy because there's nothing happy about this, but I appreciate that you've taken the time to be so candid and give us so much time. Is there anything that I missed, anything that you would like to say to the community, to the family, to the country, really, about what you're dealing with here? So, um, as, as someone who's been involved in the whole police reform conversation, you know, going before the Senate, it's just important for me as a leader to, to not just talk about police reform, 
but to take swift action and also to, to represent other law enforcement leaders who have also reached out, who also believe that the way we handle these types of things, and unfortunately, a man had to die for us to get to a point where we could actually exercise what justice looks like. But it's important for us to prove to the community that no matter what, we're going to do the right thing. And that we're going to work on our agencies, we're going to take a deeper dive and not just assume that officers are doing what they're supposed to do. To you, before I let you go, do you need help from Washington? There's a George Floyd Policing Act in Washington that has just sitting there. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, the George Floyd Policing Act, some of the recommendations I was able to be a part of, and actually that was part of my testimony, the duty to intervene. You know, um, ensuring chokeholds are banded, uh, ensuring that their national registries for officers, when they do bad, they can't move to other agencies. We want those laws passed. You know, um, those laws were put on the table and pushed to the side under the previous administration. Some of those laws need to be passed so that agencies around the country will have consistency in the manner in which we deal with that community. I really appreciate you giving us a personal review. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate your candor. Thank you. And the way that you're dealing with this. Thank you so much. And best of luck to you. We will be here throughout the day. And let's hope it works out and there's no violence. Absolutely. Thank you, Don. Thank you. I really Thank appreciate you. it. Thank you so much.